Hi guys, welcome to another Nexus 7 video. This video is all about my home screens. Often I'm asked in videos when I'm talking about something completely different, somebody will notice something on one of the home screens and say, huh, oh, what application was that? Or what uh, launcher are you using? Or so on. So I'm going to give you a small uh, and hopefully not too long guided tour of my Nexus 7. So the first thing to note is that I've not changed any of the lock screens or anything. Uh, this is the default Nexus 7 launcher. Uh, of course there are other launchers available, such as Apex Launcher, Go Launcher HD and so on, but I'm pretty satisfied with what the default launcher can give me, because really all I ever wanted in a tablet launcher was a dock down here to put all my favourite applications, and the ability to have scrollable widgets, which uh, are these for example, this is a, um, a widget called Colorize, where I can put my Facebook feed and my Twitter feed, and these actually uh, scroll up and down and you couldn't do that before in previous uh, default Android operating systems, so operating systems but you can do it now so I'm more than happy that um, the Nexus 7 and Jelly Bean uh, launcher can do that. Uh, another question that's asked a lot is this particular um, background. Uh, it's called Galactic Core and it's absolutely free and it works very well as a live wallpaper, it doesn't seem to cause any slowdown in the uh, general running of an Nexus 7, so I highly recommend it. Uh, it's just a really nice background and it's black and dark so it doesn't interfere with any of the colours of course except for the middle bit, but uh, I can uh, live with that. So let's now go on to my main home screen, this is the one in the middle. Um, and as you can see, what I've done, I'll just zoom in at some point, so I do apologise if this is a little weird on the camera. I put uh, many of my applications into folders, uh, and it's very easy to put something into a folder. Uh, all you do is basically, uh, if I can quickly demonstrate, I will pick up the gallery and put it there. All you need to do is, when I get down there, is pick up an application, drag it to another application, you see that it turns into a circle, and then drop it in there, and now that's a folder. So uh, I press on there, and as you can see, it opens up with the folder and the icons. Some people don't actually know that. Um, it's one of those things which, if you're not aware of, uh, you sometimes just miss that you can actually do that. So let me put the gallery back into the folder where it's supposed to go, which is photography. So yes, I have uh, plenty of folders in use here. For example, uh, a news folder where I keep currents, which is one of my favourite uh, I favorite news applications. I also use Pocket, which is to read stuff offline. I'm going to do a video on that soon. The Guardian news um, application, it's more for smartphones, but the one great thing about the Guardian uh, application is that with text, you can pinch to zoom, so it turns it into a fantastic uh, tablet app as well. And the content's pretty good from the Guardian as well. We'll just get out of that application. Uh, so other applications, uh, other folders I've got, I've got one for films, uh, IMDB, I guess everyone's got that, Flickster, is an application to find out what time cinema uh, showings are on in your local cinema. Games, obviously everyone has a lot of games and uh, this is uh, uh, the first tablet where I've actually played quite a lot of games so as you can see uh, a few classics there including Stick Cricket, Major Mayhem which I've reviewed, Angry Birds, Plants vs Zombies, uh, a plethora of good games which all work really well on the uh, Nexus 7. Media players, uh, the iPlayer, which doesn't actually work at the moment, but I think they're doing an update on that very soon to make it work. MX Player, which I love for uh, one single reason. Uh, so it acts as a forwards and a backwards if you scroll anywhere on the screen. So if I just press here, you can see that the time tracking is going back, so I can go back a minute, or I can then bring it forward, back and forward a minute. And that is something that's absolutely really beautiful on a large screen because it enables you to track back just a couple of seconds, which is so much harder to do on the scroll bar down here. So uh, I recommend MX Player as a video player of choice. Obviously I have my settings here, battery widget, just a nice little battery widget that um, gives me a very clear and concise showing of what my battery status is. Uh, down here we've got another widget which is uh, the Kill Task Manager widget, uh, and it shows you uh, if my camera works, shows you the RAM that's currently in use. If I press that, it should jump up, jumps up to 500, and it kills all your tasks. Not always the best thing to use, but sometimes if you do have an application which is stuck and you can't do anything with it, um, you sometimes just have to use that. So, of course, I have other 
uh, folders such as browsers. I have a Firefox beta uh, so that I can watch Flash, but I've also got Firefox, the main one as well now. Dolphin Browser is my browser of choice, and for one simple reason. It's uh, reliable, solid, uh, just as good as any other browser in that sense, but the one thing I love about Dolphin Browser is you can do that to get to bookmarks, and I absolutely love that uh, quick transition that you can use to go from one bookmark to another. Other than that, it's as good as any other browser. Uh, just moving on to the left-hand side here. Photography, the one one to show here is... Um, I've downloaded a camera launcher so I can actually use the camera to take pictures. So this is probably going to show a picture of some curtains which is absolutely wonderful and there I am. I'll give you a quick wave just to show that there is a human being behind the camera. Uh, home screens, uh, social media, uh, the one I use is Tweet Lanes uh, for Facebook, uh, sorry for Twitter, um, Facebook I obviously use and Skype. Uh, the one annoying thing about Skype is it always has a notification in the top left hand corner which kind of seems to suggest that the app is always running, even if you're offline. So I would like to know or work out how to turn off Skype when I'm not using it. Uh, sports, uh, I'm into my football. Uh, the one a really nice uh, application to have for anyone who's into uh, football uh, in English Premier League is ESPN Goals. It's not officially available on tablets, but if you sideload it, you can get to watch Premier League highlights. Uh, pretty much straight after the game. Uh, it's completely legal, it's a, a, a obviously a legal app, it's just not officially available on tablets, so that's another application I recommend. Utilities, um, I've done utility uh, videos before, um, but here are the ones, uh, antivirus obviously, uh, set brightness, I like this because you just simply press it and then it quickly gives you the option to set your brightness if you need to. I found that I don't need to do it that much on the Nexus 7 because it's also brightness is pretty solid or if you just keep it on 50% it's usually good enough for most environments. Uh, let's see what else we've got, task manager, uh, obviously the Nexus 7 as I've said in previous videos doesn't come with a file explorer so you need to download one, I have ES file explorer which uh, pretty much does what it says on a tin. I don't use it that much, I can't give you um, any advanced features of it, but obviously it's showing all the folders there, which is jolly nice. Can't really complain with that one. And then a one other uh, nice uh, application is uh, Audio Manager. And this has actually nothing to do with audio. What it is, is actually a place where you can um, put uh, files that you want to hide um, if there's multiple people using this device and you have sensitive files, uh, Word documents and so on, you can actually um, put them in this audio manager. So it looks like I'm changing the um, audio, but what I actually do if I press on here, then it gives me a password, and then I put in a password and then it gives me access to files that I've put onto the device and then hidden through this. So it's quite useful if you have multiple uh, users in the house or using the tablet. Uh, one more thing is SwipePad. I've, I've um, praised this application so many times. It's really, I don't need it in the utilities folder, but um, it's just uh, in case I need to use it. Sorry about that, just messing about with the camera. Uh, what it does is it creates hotspots on your screen, and then if I swipe in from a particular place, it kicks in with this quick application changer. And so then I can move to the BBC website very fast, or if I want to go somewhere else, I can go to my book reader. So as you can see, I don't have to come out of an application to go back into another one. It's kind of multitasking in, a, in the lightest sense of the term. So there we are. That's um, I think that's pretty much all the applications that I need to show you. I've got some book readers, uh, shopping, uh, storage, and obviously you can get storage for free these days on the cloud. I've got Splashtop, which is a remote, remote desktop which I'm probably going to do a video on soon. Book readers, uh, I need a couple of book readers. Uh, I have play books so I can look at samples, same with a Kindle, but I also have Moon Reader for any um, EPUB files that I get. I can read them through uh, Moon Reader, which I think so far is probably the best reader, but it's a bit of a crowded market and there's plenty of good uh, book readers, so you can really take your choice there. Uh, and then just uh, the remnants of my Google folder, I've kind of moved them about a little bit. So there's not too much left in that folder. And then obviously the Gmail um, application. Although I don't tend to use it that much because when the notifications come in, I sort of jump to the notification straight there. Down at the bottom here then, I filled up half my screen with two widgets. Um, these are news widgets. Uh, this one on the left hand side is Appy Geek. So 
uh, basically tied it into Android news feeds. What you do is you go into your application, put in a keyword, and then it brings you all the news with Android tags in. And so this is just displaying the latest 10 stories, and then if I press on a new story, it goes straight into the story itself. Uh, so it's a nice little widget uh, to use then, and I can read the article. And then on the right hand side, it's pretty much, it's the same widget, same application, it's just different stories. This one's called News Republic. Happy Geek is obviously to do with technology. News Republic is um, more of a broader news uh, screen, uh, news scraper application. News ag aggregator, that was the word I was looking for, news aggregator. So this one's picking up sport, uh, UK sport, and uh, so on. So I pretty much uh, stick to this main screen. I do have other pages, but I don't use them that much, to be honest, uh, because I've managed to fit everything on a single screen. But I will show you what I've got. Uh, on this one, I've got the recommended apps uh, widget, uh, which I sometimes uh, just browse through to see if there's anything of interest um, to download, but uh, I'm not really seeing anything of interest there today in particular. Uh, as I said before, we have used an application called Colorize, which has a Facebook and a Twitter um, feed. And actually, I think I'm telling the, a lie here. I don't think this is Colorize. I think this is APW. That's the um, application. APW has loads of widgets, um, but I just use the Facebook and the Twitter one. I think Colorize does a very similar thing, but APW just has more options. Uh, check both of them out, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, those are pretty good. The nice things about these is you can just press on there so it shows you um, actual people I'm following and that one shows people who've connected with me and uh, Facebook has a couple of options as well and the ability to post. Although you probably can't see this because my camera zoomed out a little bit too much. But anyway, uh, and then on this final one I also have an alternative um, Twitter widget called Falcon which is pretty good actually. Um, it's better than this APW one. The only problem is is that the style of it's different and it kind of puts me off if I put the Facebook one there and the Falcon one there. It wouldn't quite look right. I'd like Falcon to release a Facebook uh, widget as well. Um, this one's nice because it has notifications when somebody connects with you and it just generally looks better. It's, it's got a nicer display although it does take up more of a page. And then this final widget here is a Dolphin widget for um, websites uh, so I can just choose one of the links here and that should take me straight into Dolphin and I'm now looking at websites uh, through the Dolphin application. So as usual what I've done here is I've talked at a million miles an hour, uh, gone through lots of applications, lots of a bit of structure in the video but I hope you find it useful and um, yeah I've just got a couple more widgets there for emails and that's pretty much it. The other stuff you're probably not going to be interested in. That's facts of the day. You can just press on that and it gives you some facts, but it doesn't take new ones. And so you run out of facts pretty quickly. And that's a fantasy football app which doesn't seem to be working at the moment. So yeah, that's uh, a whistle stop, whistle stop tour of my applications on my tablet. If you have any specific questions, please ask. I'm not going to try and fit all these applications into the description because there's far too many. So any specific specific questions ask and I'll try and answer them in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you again in an Nexus 7 video very soon.